Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Dr. Xu Zhao Gao from Stark Wen. You can call me Dr. Gao or XJ. But not Dr. XJ. Uh, Dr. XJ, yeah, if we are friends, that's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm. <laughs> and I'm Mike Ferris, also from Stark and Wayne. Uh, thank you all for coming to our session. Let's jump uh, right into the QA. Uh, usually we have a QA at the end. You may wonder, we, are you crazy why you are doing a QA at the beginning? Uh, by the way, that's supposed to be a joke. I take a courtesy laugh if it's not funny. Um, so, <laughs> thank you. Um, so we, we, we kind of do this presentation is like a question ask and answering style. So that's why I did that joke there. Um, I guess it's funny when I explain my joke also, right? <laughs> uh, anyways, the first question is why Cloud Foundry application runtime? Uh, in short, uh, CFAR. Actually, quite often we just say Cloud Foundry, but we know CFAR, application runtime, CFDR are the same thing. Why it is so popular? Uh, what are the top three reasons you think CF is so popular? I see some thinking face in the audience. Thank you for engaging in the presentation. So there's a three, top three reasons jumping into my mind, which is, which are, Developer experience, developer experience, developer experience. Uh, so why I say that, um, so CF, with this CFAR, developers can just focus on code, focus on create your fancy apps. You don't, you just run CF push, you don't need to worry about how to build your code, how to run your code. You don't need to worry about how to scale it. So you see, you, you, then for services, you also can just run CF, create a service, ban the service, easy, right? Because CF are doing the, all the hard work behind it to make this service work with your app. So the simpler, the better. So the next question will become, in order to guide such good developer experience, how are, how are we going to deploy and leave this, uh, leave with this CFAR? Uh, I bet you already know the answer now is Cloud Foundry Bosch. Uh, Bosch is a super, full, a su super, full, <laughs> super powerful tool for re release engineering, deployment, and the life cycle management for either small scale or large scale distributed system. It has lots of features. Uh, such as like self for healing. Like if some VMs goes down, Bosch will try to recreate it, uh, recover it. Uh, also, like you can deploy uh, CF onto different av availability zones to achieve HA. HA. Um, also, easy to scale, easy to work with different IIS. However, there's always a but or however. If you would like manage multiple of CFs environment, not only that, also system around it. Like you want to back up and restore your data. You want to monitor what's going on. You want to manage your credentials. <laughs> you want to ma manage your credentials, right? All those, then only just Bosch is not enough. We need something built around it, make those experience easier for you. I see your face said, oh, I agree. Um, so I recommend a talk, which is from Charlie Baum. Oh, not from Charlie Baum. Sorry, I have a migraine today. Uh, Charlie Baum from Comcast. He's going to share with you how in their company uh, use a tool to deploy and manage this multiple production ready CF environment in a very efficient way and bring their uh, 
business value. I see someone is taking picture of this. That means you buy it. Thank you. Uh, so it's tomorrow. Uh, you see that uh, right before lunch. Uh, in my belief, it's a very good appetizer before your lunch time. So make sure you go to that talk. So CF, we already have this CF. It's so nice, bringing you good developer experience. Uh, why do we still need a Kubernetes? So this CF AR is entirely focused on the stateless cloud native or so-called 12-factor applications. How about the case that developers need or would like to pack everything in a container? So in that way, uh, the developer can run this app in a consistent way everywhere. It's the same on your laptop, it's the same in your dev environment, it's the same in your production environment. So it's obvious to me the top one reason uh, for Kubernetes or any other container orchestration system is run containerized workloads. Uh, so Kubernetes kind of become a standard for container orchestration. It supports both stateful and stateless workload. It also gives you more granular control. Um, that can be a good or bad thing, right? If you want simple or you want more control, depends on. Um, then the next question will be, great, Kubernetes will manage your container, take care for you, but who take care of your Kubernetes, right? Um, so let's say if some of your uh, app goes down, Kubernetes is very good, I'm going to put your container onto a different node. But how about the control plane? Who makes sure the control plane is running all the time, all that? I guess you already see one of the solution, the answer here, is CFCR, uh, Cloud Foundry Container Runtime. Actually, it, it is, it was called Kubo. Basically, use that powerful Bosch I mentioned earlier to deploy your Kubernetes cluster. So then you have the feature like we mentioned earlier, right? Self-healing, uh, easy scaling, HA, all that. Um, but as we pointed out earlier, if you want to manage multiple clusters, there, there's, the, the system around it is needed to make it easier. One of the solution in the community is this uh, Gardener from SAP. It, it focuses on 100% is Kubernetes. There's no Bosch. Uh, the goal is provide a Gardener as a service. So basically use Kubernetes to deploy more Kubernetes. So if your team has lots of expertise on Kubernetes, uh, I can see this is a very neat solution. So go, to, go into a little bit more detail. Uh, the basic idea you can see here, uh, you will have a dedicated Kubernetes cluster which are running a thing called the gardener. What it is, it's a extension API server with a bundle of custom controllers. So that will enable you to deploy your seed cluster and the shoot clusters. Then you may ask, what is this seed cluster? So this seed cluster is uh, deploying the control planes for your shoot clusters. Then the shoot clusters are the real place running your workload. Um, so that way you can see the Kubernetes here will take care of the HA, uh, manage your control plane of your shoot cluster. Um, they suggest to do one seed cluster per IIS per region, like the, we showed in this diagram, because of the network latency and the other uh, reasons here. Cool, so we talk about this different solution, CFAR, CFCR. Uh, the next question you may have, this is not an A or B question, right? Why not both? Since they, they have their own strengths, their 
uh, own values and the purpose. So a user case, for example, uh, their clients or companies, they, they use CFAR to, to run their cloud native apps. So they, they take advantage of that good developer expense. Then they run their services on Kubernetes to uh, provide on-demand service on, uh, for those CF apps. Um, so in that user case, uh, there's a tools to, to make the experience better, like one of them are uh, Kibosh, Kibosh. So that enables you run a CF command, say CF create a service. Then it will just create a service out of Helm chart into the marketplace in CF. It also, certainly you can also do CF update service, uh, CF bind service, all that, yeah. Uh, but there, there is one of the, the issue uh, is when your apps in your CF world want to consume a service from a Kubernetes cluster, it's not that straightforward. Usually you have to deal with like, like how they talk, right? You, you may have to use like a node part service, you may have to use a load balancer or ingress controller, all that. This blog post I put here is uh, the, I think it's a very uh, cool idea and uh, awesome work from my coworkers. <laughs> um, so what this is, this is try to make a container to container direct networking between your application and uh, CF application and the services. So check it out if, if you want more, more details. Okay, uh, so what about if your team are very familiar with Kubernetes but would like to use CF? Don't worry, you are covered. Because there is a project, uh, Cloud Foundry CF Containerization, the basic idea is instead of using Bosch release for deploy CF, it, uh, it converted to the image so you can easily deploy your CF on your Kubernetes. There's also other solution based on this idea. Uh, Suji has SCF, IBM has CFE, what's called Cloud Foundry uh, Enterprise Edition before now called the Cloud Foundry Enterprise environment. Um, I know you're trying hard to read, okay, what are those items mean? Um, if, you, uh, if you want to learn more, you can go to check uh, their website or GitHub to, for more details. And also, there is a, a talk t uh, today, later, before dinner time. <laughs> Uh, it's CF101 for Kubernetes users. So if you are really from Kubernetes world but want to explore more on CF, uh, this is a talk I recommend you guys go. So the last thing I would like to point out is with this last solution we talk about the containerized CFAR solution, you will have nice to the containers, right? For example, you, you push your app, uh, then you will have it running in Kubernetes. Uh, then you see the container actually is the container for your Diego style containers. Then you go inside again, that's the real one running your app. So just to keep in mind if you are adopting this solution. Next, it's time to give the mic to Mac. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh, please. Hey guys, thank you, extra. So yeah, like XJ just talked about, we're getting into some uh, different solutions that involve mixing Cloud Foundry and Kubernetes. And in this case that she actually just talked about, we are putting Cloud Foundry directly on Kubernetes via the CF containerization project. And so that is literally just taking every VM within Cloud Foundry, turning it into a container and running it on Kubernetes. Now, as she mentioned, you have, uh, anybody who knows Cloud Foundry knows that 
apps run as containers within Diego cell VMs in the typical architecture. But in this architecture, those Diego cell VMs are now themselves containers. So you're running apps as containers within containers. And that can be a problem. Number one, with debugging, if you get a problem, if you get, let's say you get a networking problem in an app, do you start debugging that? Which container level do you start debugging that at? You can also run into security issues between um, the uh, discrepancies between the uh, security settings of the two containers. Anyway, it can be a problem. And uh, so there's incentive to move towards having the CF core uh, components, such as the cloud controller, uh, Go routers, basically everything except the Diego cells that actually run the apps, have those be uh, containers running on Kubernetes and then have the actual apps themselves also be containers running on Kubernetes. And so that brings us to a project called Irini, which allows us to do just that. It effectively swaps out the Diego cell orchestration layer and allows you to use Kubernetes in its place. So that, like I said, you can get an architecture like this where, is there a mouse here? Yeah. So here's your Kubernetes, uh, or excuse me, your Cloud Foundry core components running as containers on Kubernetes. And then instead of the Diego cells running as Kubernetes and then apps as extra containers on top of those, we've gotten rid of Diego. And Arini is the uh, solution that allows you to just directly run your apps on Kubernetes after a CF push. So you're getting the same, you're getting the Cloud Foundry developer experience out of this, like XJ talked about, which is really the reason people use Cloud Foundry, that CF push abstraction layer that lets developers not have to worry about the containers. But then under the hood, you're also, you're running them on Kubernetes. And if you're a uh, organization that has a lot of Kubernetes experience, you're now making, you can effectively make use of that Kubernetes experience. So this is something that obviously there's incentive to do because uh, people have put so much work into the Arini project problem with this is that these currently the CF core components, they are certified to run as Bosch deployed VMs. That is uh, the way to run them right now. And that is how so many organizations have scaled these up and found problems with them and then sub subsequently solved those problems and given those back to the community. So it's really a uh, certified prod tested battle, battle hardened uh, solution to deploying those CF core components, whereas deploying them as Kubernetes uh, containers right now, containers on top of Kubernetes, there, and there will end up being a lot of unknown unknowns due to the lack of prod experience at bigger enterprises running that way. So instead, a solution that fixes that is to do a blend of the of a couple of the solutions that we've talked to today. So You'll see here we are running the CFAR core, those core components that I talked about, like the cloud controller, the Go routers, basically everything except the Diego cells that are running your apps. Run those as the Bosch deployed VMs as it's tested, as it's certified by the community, and then use Arini to switch out the Diego layer for Kubernetes. And so you're still making use of your organization's Kubernetes experience. Um, and then obviously the trade-off here is that you need to, you, in this, in this case, you do, your organization does need to have Bosch expertise in order to properly make use of that. Um, yeah. So those are a couple of the different ways that your organization can mend together Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry and kind of use them in tandem. And there is no best, real best solution that comes, that comes out of these. It's really going to depend on the, uh, on your organization and details of them. So I'll run through a quick re quick recap of all the options we've talked about. So there's Cloud Foundry, which is uh, best deployed via Bosch, via the CFAR Cloud Foundry application runtime release. There is Kubernetes, which is best deployed by uh, the via Bosch, via the Cloud Foundry container runtime deployment. There is the projects like the CF containerization project, which makes use of SUSE CF and IBM's uh, CFEE project to take every single Cloud Foundry VM, turn it into a container, and toss it on Kubernetes. And then there is the Irini project, which removes the double nesting of containers and allows you to just directly run your containers on Kubernetes instead of running Diego on Kubernetes and your apps on Diego. And so the and then there and then there is 
taking the CF core components off of Kubernetes and instead running those as Bosch VMs so that you can know that you are going to scale properly and not hit, like I said, unknown unknowns with uh, scaling that up into oblivion. And so which one to choose? The best answer is, it depends, like I said. It's gonna depend on a couple of things. It's gonna depend on your, oh, I got a big, I meant to split this up, but so it's gonna depend, depend on the workloads you wanna run, like XJ talked about, or Dr. Gao talked about. Um, do you want to get abstract, abstract containerization completely away and just have your developers pushing straight source code? That's gonna be where Cloud Foundry strengths are. Do you wanna run containerized workloads where your developers are customizing those containers and they are taking responsibility for that containerization? Then you're gonna uh, use Kubernetes. And um, so which workloads you wanna run? What expertise do you have as an organization? If you have no Bosch experience, solutions like pushing your entire Cloud Foundry uh, as containers directly to Kubernetes without doing any Bosch, that's gonna be enticing for you, especially for the, for the case where you're an organization that is just getting into Cloud Foundry and you wanna get your developers familiar with it and uh, start hit the ground running. Meanwhile, you have your other operators learning Bosch and learning how to do this style of deployment where you have your Bosch deployed uh, container, uh, Bosch deployed Cloud Foundry core components. And I, yeah. Currently, yes, Be only because large enterprises and the Cloud Foundry community as a whole hasn't done that so far, but they're, in the future that will very likely change as more enterprises start doing that and uh, Cloud Foundry running, Cloud Foundry core components running as containers becomes a more battle-hardened solution and the unknown un un unknowns with scaling that up become solved. Uh-huh. Right. Right. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Right. <laughs> Uh-huh. Right. Uh-huh. <laughs> Shots fired. <laughs> right. I agree. And yeah, in the future, that definitely will be the ideal once it's vetted by the community. And yeah, 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 in the, yeah, I, sh I, I sh uh, thanks. Um, yeah, so like Dr. Nick mentioned, in the future, obviously, the once that, uh, solution of running your CF core components on directly on Kubernetes without having to Bosch deploy anything. That will obviously be the ideal once it's uh, battle hardened by a lot of enterprises using it. Mm -hmm. Guy in the red shirt, get at him. Australian accent. <laughs> yeah so any the uh the three things that factor into which one of you which one of these you should choose what workloads you want to run which expertise does your organization have and how far do you need to scale and like dr nick mentioned that how far do you need to scale that will change once uh 
CF core components as containerized components on Kubernetes rather than Bosch deployed VMs. Once that's more battle hardened, uh, that will be a better idea for companies to decide to run their business on at scale. Whereas right now that might not be the best idea because you might hit some issues that the community hasn't hit yet and you might be ahead of the pack and trying to figure it out for yourself rather than relying on the community and their expertise. Um, and so with that, we'll bring on any other questions that anybody else has. Yeah. If, yes, if non-12 factor apps are more heavily supported by Kubernetes, then yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. Ideally not. If you have your CI CD designed effectively enough to abstract that all away. Yeah, from the developer's experience, from the developer's perspective, Right, you're right, it becomes abstracted away and it does become a trade-off between the expertise of the uh, operators within the organization. So yeah, good point, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll get really sweaty. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. Right. Do we have a question in the back? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So I was just coming at it from the perspective of will Cloud Foundry work and should you trust it at scale running your business on a solution that is not uh, the like the TM solution by the Cloud Foundry community. But yeah, if you if your organization has uh, incentive or uh, if you want to decide, yeah, how, decide whether you want to run containers or VMs, then that's going to play in obviously too. <laughs> Any other questions? Um, yeah. Right. Right. Ideally, the developer wouldn't be able to tell, and um, yeah, the prob the problem becomes debugging from the operator's perspective. If something goes on, for example, with networking, do you start at the con which container level do you start at? It just adds layers at which you need to de uh, figure out where you're even going to start debugging. So yeah, you're right. Uh, ideally, developers wouldn't be able to tell. Do you want to uh, talk yeah. about that? Actually? The Gardner project, right? The, yeah. yeah, provide the Kubernetes cluster as a service. Yeah. Uh, the gardener itself is talking about 100% teach Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. So if yeah. let, let's forget about CF for a second. Let's say, oh, actually, let's talk about the CF for a second. It has org space to take care of the multi-tendency, right? But in Kubernetes, uh, what's a, a common way to do it is maybe one team has its own Kubernetes cluster. Because once you get access to the cluster, you get access to everything. So a typical way is one team or one project, or one cluster. So from that way, you can see actually it's very useful to provide Kubernetes cluster as a service. OK, team A want one. OK, garden, create one. There you go, right? That's one uh, perspective. Uh, then the, the other benefit of that model uh, I can see is uh, take care of your control plane of your Kubernetes cluster. So basically, another Kubernetes is managing your control plane, make sure it's running, uh, it can be 
uh, self recover, things like that. Another thing is then your control plane and uh, your work node are separated. So that way enables you give that team full access to that shoot cluster without worrying, uh, like uh, mess up with control plane all that. Um, yeah. Th does that answer your question? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much to make this key real QA, real QA. <laughs> I think thank we you. are running on top uh, a little bit of time here, but please stop by Stackman booth. I believe it's number four. So if you have more questions, feel free to stop by. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really. <laughs>